Hello everyone, my name is Richard, and in this topic, I will talk about the EBPF usage experience in system security with my colleague Xu Feng Zhang. We are both from Ant Group. We will talk about the security issues we want to resolve and why we choose this EBPF. Finally, we will introduce our EBPF based security platform. These are the four major kinds of security issues we want to resolve. We want to decide the default hardened options of Linux kernel and mitigate Linux kernel vulnerabilities. We also want to detect and prevention container escape and Linux malware. All of this need kernel detection and prevention. A kernel hardened decision, as we know, it's difficult to decide which hardened options should be set. As there are a lot of application running cluster, every small change in kernel may cause unexpected consequences. So should we disable user names based creation? The BPF can tell the answer. We can attach the BPF to such term and collect the access log. After analysis the access log, we can make the decision to disable user names based or unprivileged user photo FD. As we also know, it's not easy to patch Linux kernel wipes in production environment. However, we need to process these vulnerabilities as it's easy to do container escape in container leveraging these vulnerabilities. Uh, we can use BPF to uh, leave patch the uh, kernel. Of course, this needs BPF LSM. We can first analyze the exploit and then generate a BPF program, then attach to system. So after that, our system can stop this attack. Uh, container is popular this this container escape is not uncommon. There are lots of misconfiguration can lead container escape. For example, the user mode help. We can detect and prevention container escape for as following. For example, for the user mode help escalation, we can attach a cable of eBPF to the kernel function called user mode help setup and inspect the access log to find the suspicion core of it. Now this Linux Marvel use a lot of advanced technologies such as uh, fileless, BPF and rootkit. We can use BPF to detect this uh, uh, Marvel quickly and easily. For example, for the fileless attack, we can attach a such core eBPF to memory FD create. Okay, so let my colleague Xu Feng Zhang to talk about our eBPF based security platform. Okay, after Li Chang discussing about the four major threats, now let me introduce our BPF uniform platform. I'm Xu Feng Zhang from Ant Group. So, to know all the about security issues, we need to install different kinds of BPF program for the whole cluster node. And for the sake of minimize performance impact, BPF programs will be made fingering and loaded on demand. Moreover, BPF must be flexible to schedule and easy to use for end users. Thus, a policy language is also needed. So, in order to meet all the requirements, we developed a cloud native BPF orchestration platform named BPF Shared, including a Kubernetes operator and a BPF manager demo set. The workflow begins with a uh, user provided a policy YAML. The policy is a Kubernetes custom resource definition. After the policy is created, the operator is triggered and it passes a rule in the policy, converting them into BPF artifact. The BPF artifact is another Kubernetes CRD. It consists of BPF program and map data. In the demo set side, there is also a Kubernetes controller which watches the activities of BPF Artifact. When the BPF Artifact is ready, it fetches the content of BPF Artifact and calls the loader to load the BPF program and map data into kernel. All the BPF program shares an identity-based rule engine to do filtering and output audit events. Let me make a summary for this talk. As we can see, BPF is powerful and useful in system security. And we have implemented a uniform platform to make BPF used in system hardening, system log patching, container execution monitoring, and Linux malware detection. 
Thanks for your time.